Winners take adversity and turn them into opportunity. But midway through halftime, I realized that football is a game and football is a sport that you make a lot of money, but football is not who I am. And that's very important in life because if you don't know who you are, you're who they say you are. And once a situation or circumstances can name you, it has all power and authority over you. In other words, you can never grow past your name. But I didn't always have that confidence of knowing who. Listen, that is one of the secrets of winners is that they have a strong sense of identity. And they're not born with it. They practice it. They develop it. They have people around them that encourage. Why do you think athletes have groupies? Politicians have entourages. Stars have. Why? It's because we have to always feed that because society is always telling you who you are and basically who you're not. Athletes and winners have a strong what's called internal locus of control, which enables us to become the thermostat, not the thermometer. One reacts, the other responds. For a second, before the game, I called my mama. I don't know what y'all say in Indiana, but in Columbus, Ohio, it's mama. And I'm like, mama, how many tickets would you like for the game? She said, hold on, baby, I'll call you back. She called back 15 minutes later, baby, I need 114 tickets. Aunts, uncles, nieces, my pet dog, Rover, they all had tickets. And as I'm jogging out there, man, and there's 70,000 people in the stadium, all of a sudden I hear my mama stand up and she screams, that's my baby. <laughs> I'm like, hi, mom. <laughs> I get in the huddle, all stars, all pros in the huddle. I ain't gonna go down the list, but I got this crazy offensive tackle, though. I, I gotta talk about this guy from Michigan State, right? His, his last name is Mandrix, and he has tattoos and long hair, and he is ready. And I, and I feel real good being next to Mandrix. So the first play is 26 dive. Now, for all you football novices, let me help you out. Even numbers are always on the right side, odd numbers are always on the left side. It's 26 dive. It's coming right around the tackle. And so I'm jogging to the line of scrimmage, and the closer I get to the line of scrimmage, I begin to hear the sound like <sighs> Big Daddy is sucking up all the available oxygen. <laughs> I get up and I get down on my three-point stands and I'm ready, right? And my quarterback is like, blue 35, blue 35, perfect drop step, boom, got a hold of Big Daddy, and I shoved him back about two or three inches. <laughs> <laughs> you got that, right? <laughs> Marshall comes and he sets that block, seven yards from the play. Marshall gets up, he's fired up. I get up, I'm fired up. We're jogging back to the huddle, high five. Good job, Orb. I'm like, yeah. I turn Big Daddy's getting up off the ground. I walk over, I look at him. I said, you know what? It's going to be like this all game, player. Me hitting you and you hitting the ground. <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> And I struggled from the fifth grade all the way up. Um, in fact, I leave high school with a 1.62 accumulative GPA, not on my ACT. Graduating last in my class. Athletically, I was, I was horrible. I wasn't even honorable mention all conference. You can look this stuff up. I was the guy in the back of the room, and this guy was all city, all state, all universe, all intergalactic third quadrant of the Universal Force Fleet Award. And I'm in the back in that participation award, eating that nasty cordon bleu. Who made cordon bleu? The French. <laughs> I get a phone call from a junior college in Mason City, Iowa. Mason City, Iowa is like 26,000 blonde hair, blue eyes. Everyone's last name is Schneider, okay? <laughs> I'm in the cornfields of Mason City, Iowa. And I sit the bench the entire season, not one play. And going into the second year, I have a conversation with myself. And I said, you're right, I can't be successful. I don't have what it takes to be successful. I said, but I can win. And at that moment, I turned life into a game. And I said, in this game of life, I understand how to compete. I know how to win. And I begin to do what winners do. And under normal situations, you know, we can balance stuff, right? You know, we can balance this and life. And, you know, we got the kids' soccer game. My son's going to the NFL in the third grade, you know. 
PTA and this and that. And, but then this thing called COVID came and post COVID, it kind of like, man, and you still got to hold it together. And you got to act like everything is okay. Because God forbid you put a bad post on Facebook, you might get banned. Because everyone's happy on Facebook. <laughs> are you hurt or are you injured? This is what I mean by that. When I played football, we would occasionally get hurt. Get hurt all the time, actually. <laughs> and 80% of the injuries, we would, we would play through the pain. But then there's, a, then there's every once in a while where the player sits down on the field and we're taught to sit down. If you're hurt that bad, sit down. That's a signal to the trainer, come out. And then the trainer comes out and he examines or she examines and says, they make the determination. This person is hurt, this person is injured. Now, if the person is injured, then they will pull the player. Now, there's 80,000 people. They want their key person to play the game. They want the key person to step in to perform, but that person is unable to perform. And the coach, if he had it his way, you probably would put the player in because the coach wants to win and we're all winners and we all want to win. We all want to go to the next level. We all want to excel but if you're injured, it's more detrimental to be on the field than off the field. So what the head trainer does, I want you to watch it next time it happens, that the head trainer will grab the player's helmet. Now, once the head trainer has the helmet, he or she is in charge from that moment forward. The head coach, the, the general manager, the owner, the president, of nobody can override that trainer at that moment. I will not allow this player to go back on that field until he or she is ready to game and to play at his or her optimum level. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to say to you is that there needs to be one or two people in your life that has the respect or you have has the respect from you to say, you know what, at any given time, I'm giving you the authority to hold my helmet. But in this game, you will get knocked down. You will have setbacks. You will be disappointed. But when you get knocked down, if you can look up, maybe you can get up. Because that's what we do. And there's always a way to win.